Hey kids, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 6, Images in the Theater, Exercise Number 1. We have an Investigate and Modify. We're going to run the program to observe the results. Then we're going to experiment with the program by making the following modifications. Change one line at a time, then run the program after each change to observe the result. Then we have a bunch of things to change. Let's take a look at our code first. We're instantiating two objects my scene from the scene class we're importing, and then my image from the brightened image class. It is passing along books JPEG. If we go to our assets, that is this image right here. Then we have a print statement, number of pixels. Then we have my image get width and is being multiplied by the my image get height. So it looks like our width and height are being multiplied and that's going to be printed off. Then we are drawing our books JPEG. Then we are running a method called brighten colors and passing along 50, pausing for half a second, and then redrawing that same image. Let's go over to brightened image. Over in this class, we're extending our theater and a new class called media, and we'll talk about that in a second. Our class brightened image is importing image from that media that we imported up here. We're creating one 2D array called image pixels. Our constructor is taking that 2D array and it is setting that 2D array to the method get pixels. We have a get image pixels method that's returning the image pixels. A get pixels method is creating a 2D array temp pixels, and that's the width and the height of our image. And then it looks like we're going through that image because we have a 2D array and it's going through it in a row major traversal. And it looks like this temporary pixel array that we created from above is getting set equal to the get pixels method at the column and row. Get pixels looks like it's returning whatever that pixel we're at within our image. And if you're wondering, Mr. Rhodes, what's a pixel? A pixel is just that little dot on your screen. And if we think back to APCSP, we can remember back in our unit two of that class, so we had a whole entire lesson on images. Our images are made up of these individual pixels on our screen. And within these individual pixels to get the colors, we have red, green, and blue. So it looks like our get pixel method here is getting the X and Y coordinates within our image and returning that to our array. And remember those values it's returning are our RGB values. Brighten colors is another 2D array, row major traversal. This looks like it's going through our array and it is creating a 2D array called current pixel. And that's equal to whatever image pixel we're at in our row and column. So this looks like it's going through each of those X and Y coordinates. And within each of those X and Y, it's changing the RGB or red, green, and blue. And again, remember those values go from zero to 255. Zero would be completely black. 255 would be white. That means if we're adding to our image at each of those RGBs or red, greens, and blues, we're gonna be lightening the image when we go around. I think I understand the code now. Let's head back to my theater. I think when I hit run, I'm going to get a print statement that gives me how many pixels total are in my image down in my console. I'm going to get that books JPEG to print off a half a second later. I'm going to run that brighten colors method, which is going to add 50 to each of the red, green, and blue pixels in my image. That's going to brighten it up a little. And then I'm going to clear the screen and draw that brightened image. Let's see if I'm right.
If you blinked, you might have missed it, but our image did print regularly. And then it got slightly brighter. Now that I think I understand the fundamentals of the code, let's understand some of the particular parts. Let's look at the brightened image class. What does a class extend? Access the docs and tips tab and find the documentation for the image class in the code.org media package. What methods does this class have? Go back to our brightened image. We saw this when we were talking about the code. We're importing this org.code.media. How can we find more about this? Let's go to our documentation. And if we click right there, we're going to find more about this class we're importing. Let's go ahead and click it and find out. Over here, we have org.code.media and image below it. Within this package we're importing, the image class does the following. The pixels method creates a 2D array pixel object that makes up the image. So this is actually creating the overlay of pixels that we can change. We can get the width and the height of the image. And it looks like we have some static finals. So the maximum width of an image is 400, maximum height is 400, and the default background color is white. These aren't things we can change. With the image class, we have to create a new object. To do that, we call the image class, name it our name, new image, and we're passing along the file we want to get the pixels array for. Just like some of the other ones, it has to be in quotes, the exact same name is our image. Not only can we just import our image, we have some overloads, which gives us parameters. Remember that vocabulary word. And we can tell it the width and the height of the image we want to create. So we can just import it at is or give our own aspect ratio to our image. This is our get pixel method. This gets the X and Y coordinate of the pixel. Once we get that X and Y coordinate, we can also set that pixel. We do that by calling the X and Y coordinate and then the color we want to change. Remember, we can call the color or we can call the red, green, and blue. We have a couple more methods to get with that returns the total pixels in the width of the image and the same thing with the height, the total pixels in the height. Finally, we can clear our image if we want to draw another one. I think what the image class basically does is allows us to access the individual pixels within an image and change the RGB or red, green, blue values within it. We're not done yet. The image also has the pixel class included. Let's take a look at that. In the pixel class, we can get the X coordinate of the pixel we're looking at. We can get the Y coordinate of the pixel we're looking at. Get source image gets the actual image that the pixel is a part of. Looks like we can get the color of an individual pixel. So if we call 1020, it'll go to whatever pixel is it at 1020 and get the color. Then we can set the color. This sets the individual pixels to a specific color. We have a get red, get green, get blue method here. This will get our RGB colors. And if we can get them, we can also set them. So we can set the RGB or red, green, blue colors in our image. Let's go back to code.org and finish up this lesson. I think we talked a little bit about this. This has several methods we can use. I think the most important are going to be how to create an image in the image class and how to get the X and Y coordinates. Let's look at question two. In Brighton Image Java, what is the purpose of line 11? What happens if you change the line to image pixels equal new pixels, get width, get height? Line 11 is this one right here. And I mentioned this a little when we were talking about the code. Brightened images is our constructor. The image pixels is the 2D array we created. 
get pixels is telling us where we're at within that image. That means we can access the individual pixels we need to in the X and Y or rows and columns. If we change it to a new object that just gets the width and height, this is creating a 2D array with a specific number of rows and columns that will match the image's height and width. But the data type is asking for that the 2D array is ready to hold a pixel object in each index. That's the red, green, blue. But now each spot in the 2D array is left empty or null. So when the brighten color methods try to get the current pixel out and call the get red, get green, get blue method, it returns a null point exception. Let's see if we're right. Let's go copy our code. Paste. And we do, we get a null point exception. Why do we get that? Well, we're creating a bunch of pixels that have no information. Whenever our object is looking for a value, it's getting null, which is giving us the error. Let's go ahead and look at number three. Look at the get pixels method. Why do you think the 10 pixels array is initialized with the get height rows and the get width columns? What happens if you change those values? The well, first thing we need to do is we need to change back our code here. Then let's go look at our get pixels method. And we're going to look at the get width and get height parameters right here. This again is getting how many pixels our object actually has. Our get height method is giving us our pixel height. Our get width is giving our pixel width. So this sets up an array. This is the correct size for our image. If we change it, we're not going to get the entire array overlay. So that means when we go to do something, we're only going to do it to the amount of pixels we want. That means if I change it to something smaller, say like 20 or 30, that means only the top little corner is going to see any changes because it's only going to loop through the 20 rows and columns at the top. But the image is over 400 pixels long. If I go above 400, then it's going to be bigger than my image and I'm going to get an error that I'm outside my array. Let's see if I'm right. Let's change it to something smaller first. Let's do 20 by 20. And you're really going to have to watch for it in this top corner of the change. Let's hit stop and run. Let's do that one more time. Again, watch this little corner here change. Again, why is that little part changing? Well, when we created our overlay, we only created it that was 20 pixels by 20 pixels not the width and the height of the image. So it went to loop through. It only went through 20 by 20 pixels. Let's try going larger. Let's try going to 500. By 500 should get an error. And we're getting our array index out of bounds because we're trying to access pixels that aren't there. Don't forget to change it back to the get height and the get width method. Let's look at number four. What is the purpose of line 23? Why do you think it's get pixel column row instead of get pixel row column? What happens if you switch these? We're talking about this line right here. If you take a look at this image, this explains exactly why this is the way it is. In our 2D array, our row is our first number. But in an XY coordinate, a row would be your Y. So it's your second. 
That means if I switch these to row column, I'm switching the X and Y. And again, I'm going to get another error because I'm trying to access information that is outside the array that we created. Let's test this. Let's go row column, stop run. Again, another array index out of bounds. That happens because we switch the X and Y coordinates and this image isn't a perfect square. So we're trying to access information outside the 2D array in both the row and column. So again, remember your row is your Y coordinate, your column is your X coordinate. And those have to be flipped when we're using the get pixel method. Let's change this back. Let's look at number five. Look at the bright and colors method. What do you think the purpose of line 33 is? What would need to change if this line was not there? Let's look at 33. We're talking about this line right here. And what this is doing is creating a 2D array to store the current pixel location we're at. And that variable current pixel is storing both the row and column. If we were going to change this, we would have to create variables that would store the X coordinate and then separate variables that would store the Y coordinate. So the purpose of this little line of code is just to temporarily store whatever pixel we're at so we can change the value. Remember, we can only store something or display something. In order to change the value, we have to create a temporary variable to hold that to display. Let's look at our final question. What do you think would happen if you subtract amount from the current color values? We're talking lines 35 to 37. We talked about this a little already. This is adding to our amount and the higher we get from zero to 255, the lighter we get. That means if we subtract, we should be darker. So let's hit subtract here, subtract here and here. Now when I hit run, our image should come back darker than lighter. Well, let's see if we're right. As you can see, the image did get darker. I think I'm starting to understand how the image class works in Athena. Key takeaway from this lesson is really understanding the image documentation as well as the pixel documentation. What we learned about today is that we can use the image class to essentially make an overlay of our image. And that overlay can access individual pixels. The individual pixels are made up of three values, red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue are made up of values from zero to 255 or a byte. The closer to zero, the darker the image is. The closer to 255, the lighter the image. Since we're creating a 2D array, rows are usually the first in the square bracket, columns are the second. But in the get pixels method, that row is a Y coordinate. So it's going to be second. I think we're going to learn a little more about the image class as we go through the rest of this lesson. Hopefully this video helped you understand the image class a little better. If you have any questions, kids, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.